So, I have on my right, Aradna Goel from IDO, um, now based in Mumbai, but previously having worked in the States. Um, I'm sure most of you are very familiar with IDO, but um, we've heard a lot uh, this week about design really spreading its wings and pushing into areas like systems and really helping organizations in, in everything they do. And I think IDO is certainly one of the uh, first and um, forerunners of, of, of that kind of uh, widening of, of design's remit. Um, then we have Aldo Cingolani who, from Italy, um, who's had a, a long and distinguished career in industrial design, but recently has made a move into more the design and art space. And then at the end, we have Nacho Carbonell from the Netherlands via Spain, where he's originally from. And so I'm going to ask Aradna, please, if you would start things off for us. Sure. Hello, everyone. So I'll start with that slide. So what I want to talk about what does design mean in India and what should it mean in India. And we have been talking about the same thing for the last, um, since today morning and yesterday. So it absolutely means beauty. It means aesthetic. I actually love what Paola said yesterday, that beauty is a human right. And we shouldn't be apologetic about designing elegant situations, uh, solutions. Um, it can sometimes mean engineering. If you look at this design of the Boeing engine, it's a really well-designed, complex systems of part. It sometimes, actually these days, most times, means jugar. We know this story pretty well of a guy who wanted to meet his lover across a river and had to design an amphibious cycle to do that. So it's really about design. what is design? Designing is designing out of a problem. It is, Jugar is grassroots innovation. It's actually a very inspiring example, but these days Jugar is becoming a buzzword. It's becoming a word for people who are just designing one-off solutions without actually paying any attention to what scalability might mean, what sustainability might mean. So we all know design can mean a lot more than this. From where I come from, and knowing that our nation is an emerging nation, which is building itself, design should actually be part of solving systemic issues, like issues like education. We have a lot of problem with quality education, with the primary quality education. So why aren't designers part of that conversation? And that's a very important question. Why aren't we talking to those people? Why aren't we at the policy level? Some thoughts on why that might not be happening is because those conversations that we are having are happening at the wrong time. We come too late in the game. We are talking to the wrong people. Our patrons are not decision makers, and sometimes they don't have the budget to execute. Sometimes they don't even have the understanding, actually. So we are actually asking the wrong questions. So when a wrong question is asked, designers are part of putting lipstick on the pig, sometimes nothing more than that. And all these things, wrong time, wrong people, wrong questions, they're actually just setting up the wrong expectations. It's setting up a wrong context for us to design in. So really, what kind of conversation should we be having? So a couple of quick examples here. So IDEO has, uh, these are examples from the global world. But IDEO has worked with uh, NGO in US. And we are asking, and we are really trying to solve the problem of how can we prevent unplanned pregnancy among young women. So if you look at the statistics, every seven pregnancies out of 10 is unplanned. And these, this statistics is common for every socioeconomic sector. So how, what, what is the role that designer can play in this? Um, what we did was, like, instead of uh, birth control being about just a prescription that a doctor gives you, and then you, of course, forget to take that pill every night, 
How can one actually create a support network for women so that it moves from being a prescription into more of a subscription? What does awareness look like? What does education look like in this space? What does support network look like in this space? So really, this, what we did and what became BetSider.org was a very carefully controlled sex positive brand that allowed pe that became a movement for young women to be part of and not to be ashamed of. So the next one I would like to talk about was our work with the Red Cross. For, a comp uh, for an organization like Red Cross, the single most important currency they have is their donor bank. Now, if the membership of the donor bank is significantly going down, it's a very big challenge for the organization. So when we worked with them, we actually shift, we tried to understand the real problem. There are really only two types of donors, one who are committed, because they are doing it out of a sense of civic duty or their experience with a personal tragedy, or the non-committed ones. Those people, it's not like they don't want to give blood, it's mostly about that they are daunted by the physicality of the ask. We worked with Red Cross to actually change their focus, not so much from the medical process of blood donation, but actually focus on the donor himself by heightening the experience of blood donation, the donor, and the impact that he's going to have on the world. So the two examples I showed were more in the social and the public sector. Let's just talk about the corporate sector. Bank of America came to us and asked us the question, uh, or wanted us to understand the financial behavior of uh, women in their 40s. How do they bank? And of course, their goal is to increase the adoption of the Bank of America checkings account. Now this is a designer and a corporation conversation happening, so what does a designer do in that? We try to understand the financial behaviors and very quickly it, did, it shifted from becoming a woman issue to become like what is the financial behavior of people. And we realize two things, one, people round up their financials, because that's how people think. You don't think in 3.43s. And also, we all are aspirational savers. So we came up with a checkings account where if you were to buy coffee for $2, and let's say it cost you $1.53, what is deducted out of your debit card is $2, and the difference goes to your checkings, uh, sorry, to your savings account. So what we are taking is we are taking a business problem but in a society, we are trying to nudge people towards positive behaviors. And that is an impact a designer can make in the society. So whether it is about um, how you save, whether it is about adherence of a birth control pill, or whether it is actually about donating blood, all these uh, issues and challenges that we have been part of it's actually about positive behavior change. And how do you do that? You have to understand people. You have to understand what motivates them, what drives them. You have to understand the business reality of the situation and the technical feasibility of it and take all these perspectives as actually sources of inspiration to provide an impactful design. All of these things are important beyond creativity. Creativity is what allows you to create that solution. So now coming back to India, we need to elevate our design quotient here. We need to be part of systemic challenges. We are a nation that is building itself. So these are the questions we should be part of. We should be talking about affordable housing. We should be talking about financial inclusion. How can we actually come up with solutions where the people in the bottom of the pyramid also can participate in the growth of India and the opportunities that the new India is providing us. With that, I'll give it to the other thing, presenter. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's fantastic. Aldo. Hello. Good afternoon. First of all, uh, I would you like to thank you very much for the invitation. For me, it's the first time in India. And uh, today, 
I would you like uh, introduce myself uh, with uh, my background. My, my background uh, started in uh, 1995 in a design with a big Italian company. The name is Giugiaro Ital Design. Uh, it's located in uh, Torino and uh, they have a, a lot of different uh, uh, offices, branch offices in uh, Milano. Uh, the core business is a design and the engineering in uh, car and in industrial uh, design product. Uh, during the 15 years, I have uh, to participate in a lot of different uh, projects. We work uh, with the most important uh, worldwide company like to the Samsung, Coca-Cola, Nestle, Indesit, Alstom, and uh, each other. We have designed a lot of uh, very important uh, cars like to the Maserati, Alfa Romeo, this is Alfa Romeo Brera, the win, uh, the Compasso d'Oro, is uh, the very important award, Italian awards. We have also designed a lot of uh, different uh, prototype. This is a, a Bugatti. Bugatti was a very interesting project because uh, uh, is uh, to remake uh, a old uh, brand with a new design. This is the second one uh, uh, car. Now is in uh, a production. It is, uh, the name is Kiron Bugatti. This is another one uh, prototype for the Lamborghini. And this is uh, are the car in production because uh, uh, usually we design uh, the prototype for the fair, for the communication, and uh, for the production car, we have uh, another approach. This is, for example, the Aston Martin 2020. We have uh, redesigned the body, but the part, the, the mechanical part and the chassis is the same of the car in production. This is a Chevrolet Corvette, the new one. The designer was the 2003. This is a Ferrari. This is a prototype, not in production. And this is a very interesting Ford Mustang that we have uh, present in uh, the Detroit uh, Motor Show. Uh, we work also with the, the um, company like the Toyota for uh, to uh, study the new system of engine. In this case, uh, the car are hybrid car, electrical and in gasoline, and uh, is a very uh, innovative system. Are the driving of the car is light to the airplane. Inside of uh, our company, we have uh, also a different branch uh, to the industrial design division. We have products to and the four wheel, the sea craft design, aircraft design, rolling stock and architecture. One of the most important uh, clients was uh, Nikon, and uh, we have designed the Nikon until the 1975 with the uh, Nikon F3. And uh, during the year, we have designed uh, the Nikon F4 and the F5. We design also, we design everything. <laughs> we design also the pistols. 
for Beretta, it's very important uh, Italian company, and the guns like to the Ulrika. We designed for Mitsubishi real estate uh, the kitchen peninsula, and for Scavolettini is an Italian brand, the luxury kitchen. This is for uh, the Japanese company. The name is Okamura. Is the chair, the name was uh, Contessa and Baron, and they have a, a special tissue. We designed all for the, the graphics for NBA basketball, is a graphic. The professional coffee machine for Faema. And we win the international competition for the design of the dental chair. This, uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, different design in a packaging. This for Weara is a sake bottle. For Moe Chandon, the ice bucket. This very famous in Europe, the San Bernardo Nestlé Group uh, packaging of the water. The Nestlé for Ferrero. The San Pellegrino San Bitter. And uh, in a sport, we have designed the bicycle and another, a lot of different type of product. This is a very strange but interesting product. We have designed the pasta. We have designed the pasta in uh, the 1984. It was the big, big successful. The pasta uh, is for Barilla Voiello. The name is Marilla, and uh, the design of the pasta was inspired of the, the part of the rubber in the door of the car. That's very good. Eh? It's like, like to the ravioli. We have worked a lot uh, with the Torino 2006 because uh, we are the uh, president of uh, the comedy of the uh, Canada City. We have designed uh, the logo. We have designed the torch for the university games. And uh, in a luxury design, we design a lot of interior of uh, private plane. We designed a super boat for Baglietto, the 15 one meters. And uh, in a rolling stock division, we have designed a lot of uh, train and fast train around the world. This is the, the old one, the Pendolino, in a different country. And this is, is a Metro in Copenhagen is a completely automatic without the driver. This is the new one, Pentolino. This is the mock-up, real mock-up we are make inside of our company. It's longer 58 meters. This is the interior. I go quickly because the time. <laughs> this is the metro for Sevilla, for Nacho. Uh, this is the, the one of the question uh, is uh, what is the the secret for design uh, a lot of different type of uh, the product is technology experience partnership tools but the most important is your passion in a design this is the my past life. Now I start uh, just to the beginning of February, the collaboration uh, with uh, a very extraordinary 
person, Rossano Orlandi. Rossano Orlandi are the space uh, in Milano and uh, is a, a hub of the design. We have the store, the gallery, the design. The store is uh, a, for the private client and for the professional people. We have uh, inside a lot of different products. Every day, Rosanna changes the product, and uh, it's difficult to try the product. Is the, the place is uh, very exclusive, very creativity, very lifestyle. It's 2,000 square meter of the, the contemporary design, and uh, I think it's important, especially for you. We are the designer's agency. We try to to understand what is the best designer, young designer in the world. We are also the uh, in exclusive uh, location. We organize a lot of uh, special events. This is the table for 100 uh, VIP people every year that we organize uh, during the Milano Salone del Mobile. And uh, we are also the gallery. Uh, our gallery is uh, a, a, a mix aligned between the art design gallery. gallery. We have uh, we participate at a lot of uh, event uh, around the world in the design. This is a design our stand in uh, a design Miami in Basel, 2009. This is the. the our uh, VIP um, lounge in uh, Miami Beach with the Ruin Art. And uh, we have uh, a very nice, a very good uh, uh, designer. We are in exclusive with a Pita Inek, Nika Tsupan, Forma Fantasma, and Natural with a Nacho. The best for me. <laughs> We have a lot of um, press release because uh, we work a lot uh, with, uh, with the press. What is our next step? Our step is to opening of Rosanna Orlandi outlet in Asia and the Middle East. We start the interior solution for private uh, for the contract and to make a collection of Rosanna Orlandi products. Now we are located in Milano, in Porto Cervo, in Sardinia, and uh, in uh, May we open the new one space, Rossano Orlandi, in Hong Kong. We want to uh, open also in uh, Asia, in a special in uh, 2030, we want to open it in Delhi, and we want to open it in Singapore. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Aldo. Nacho. Hello. 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 Uh, good afternoon. I hope that you're still uh, awake. Uh, my name is Nacho. I'm going to do a short introduction of uh, myself. Um, and uh, well, we are here to discuss actually like uh, the importance of uh, design or why design matters. Big question mark. Um, I think like I like to always start the, my presentation with this word that is adaptation because I think like I believe like design actually is helping us to really adapt and actually adapt is uh, really important because without adaptation we will really die. Adaptation is re really this phenomenon that where any living organism needs to go through to, to survive in their environment and their context. So this is how I basically I adapt. This is where I grew up. This is the house of my grandparents. So this was my environment since, well, since I was born. Uh, we can see the characteristics of the context. It's green, it's blue, it's family, it's friends, it's good food. It was a good life. Uh, I studied there back in Valencia, industrial design, until I just decided to move into a new context, new environment. That was the new context, the big 
contrast was like I just moved to the Netherlands where actually you don't have the friends, you don't have the family, you don't have the sun, uh, you don't have the colors anymore. But anyway, actually I think like they still remind in your head and uh, that's the, the way you survive. And I needed to adapt, of course, to the new, uh, yeah, the new characteristics. Anyway, this really helped me to go through a kind of like an introspective trip where actually like you could just kind of like get naked into it and go through this kind of like dark path to discover who you are and who you want to do. Or who are, what, what you want to, who you want, <laughs> what you right. want to be as a designer. <laughs> At that time, I was studying at the Design Academy, and actually, uh, I discovered actually a sanctuary who I could be myself, basically. I was uh, at that moment uh, being uh, graduating, and uh, this was for me like a great opportunity, a big platform, because uh, together with a few friends, we anti squat or squat this uh, place where we will be building our own sanctuary inside of it, and this was my first workshop where I created like, uh, my first project. Uh, my first project is this one, is Pump It Up. I consider it like, after five years, six years working on this, it's still the best one. It's still this thing is the seeds of what I just create uh, after this. No, I mean, it's, it's the most important thing. It's a, it's a project that actually, like, it tries to link objects with uh, customers, objects with users. Human being and objects kind of like uh, they, they are a bit like separate or actually like human beings seems like we always need from objects, no? And actually in this case, what I wanted to do is like push the objects to need from us. This design is not complete until you don't really use it. I mean, it's kind of like a unity. So, I mean, who you are and what's the object? Actually like, She's really giving birth to these animals. She's to, to, I mean, don't get wrong because this many people thought like this was kind of like a, a toy, you know. But it's, it's something else. I think it's. It's an object that it's not just a toy. I mean, it can be very funny, humorous, but it can be very serious. It's talking about like the cycle, uh, cycle of life and death. It's talking about the necessity of like really being together, but also being alone, and uh, kind of like being like I mean, really like the most inner uh, self uh, thing that is to create something. No, I think that when you create something, you become like kind of like a, a little god. No. I think like, that's why creative people, we are kind of like very egocentric with uh, what we do and uh, how we create it and very perfectionist because at the end, what we do is who we are and actually are our babies, basically. I mean, I really have sometimes many troubles to say goodbye to the pieces once they are finished. I spend a lot of time with them. But well, from this one, it's going to be like, really like a series of uh, work that will be developing in the future that they all adapt to you. This, as uh, the previous one, this one also adapt. <laughs> it's an object that actually is... <laughs> that one is created with sun. Actually, as you kind of like build your sun castles in the beach, and uh, normally when you build a sun castle, you just take a picture to remember this moment. Uh, but what yeah. I decided actually in this one, it was to create a, a layer of rubber around it and to be able to, to transform it. That the user, the final user, is gonna be transforming this thing as he wish. It's all about like really having a conversation with, uh, with the objects that are surround us. <laughs> I feel like you need to take action in things. So actually, if you want something, take action. And that's what he's talking also, this object about like, really like, don't be passive. And here I see a lot of students, don't be passive. That really hurts. So.
as an antithesis of this, uh, this one, that actually at the beginning was really sharp, really strong shape, like really geometric, and uh, by the end it was kind of soft. I just created this one, it's for public um, environments, and it just kind of like it was a bag that designed like I could pour the concrete into it and it will grow actually in the environment where it will be placed. And this is another object that I got designed after for a, for a design competition that I got invited. And it's not about this object, it's about like what this object really gives to me, because this is not my favorite uh, object that I ever designed. It's just a kettle. Actually, what it was doing, it was changing uh, the, the color or like the layer of color, it was disappearing. And it was uh, telling you like, I'm hot, I'm very, very, very hot, while the water inside was getting hot. So you, you knew how to handle it. Actually, it's kind of like a bit of an erotic shape into it. So um, it's playing with this thing and this idea of communication between humans and objects. But this object made me won my first competition. And this is what it really gave this object to me. This was like South of France, the day that I won the competition. It was my first 10,000 euros in my pocket, created by my own work. And really, this is a moment that I will never forget. And I think like objects are designed to create these feelings. Objects doesn't really matter. I mean, now I just create more objects. But a, a, an object is just a, an empty shell. Actually, like for me, what is important is like what the object, which is the message that this object is bringing to you, which is the emotion that is bringing to you. So, th because this emotion is going to last, the object is going to die. Actually, that's why at the beginning, like the first object that I was doing, they were all very organic and they were all kind of like very fragile. Later you get like problems in marketing that <laughs> because you cannot sell them. But really, what is really important is the experience and not the object. This year, uh, well, my life continued. 2008, 2009, New Year's Eve. I spent it with my family and friends. I just get obsessed with all this newspaper while we were doing a, a campfire there. And uh, I just started collect, um, doing like this hats for me and my friends. And I just decided like, okay, this is gonna be the year of the paper. So I, I take, I go back, I look for paper. I see like these mountains of paper. That actually, I see them like really like mountains of opportunities, no? And I decided to, to transform it into creating like this uh, collection that I call Evolution, that is talking about like, this uh, idea of like how we sometimes we read things but we don't really like uh, kind of like keep them in our head just they they vanish so just i create like this uh, object that you sit on it you read your newspaper and later you just go in lane to your right side to be able to think about like what you have been reading for instance or basically to escape from all this overload of information that we have nowadays i keep working in this concept like a, a bench with a cocoon. Bench is society, is, co is community, is everything that's around me. And then is the necessity as well of being myself, of being isolated. Lover chair. This is an object where it's quite a, talking us about the, how we communicate, how we don't behave the same when we are in public and when we are in private with our couple, no? You don't do the same things. You don't act the same way. So these things, showing this duality, no? I mean, who, we are, who I am in public and who I am in private. Don't get confused, it's not the same person. I can uh, be here with you like this, but I might not be like that when uh, you find me in a dark room. <laughs> okay, we keep working in these uh, concepts and doing more things. Everything is made with papier mache. We work with uh, drug design. No very good experience, but... Uh, I, 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 Talking about the environment, how important it is, no? And how, I mean, this is just my neighborhood in Holland. I just collect this year a lot of leaves to create, I don't know what. But at the end of the year, I create this, uh, this piece. I call it the tree chair. It's a tree chair uh, or it's a chair. I mean, it, for me, this is a chair that wanted to be something else, that I start asking herself, what it will happen if uh, I want to grow, no? I mean, who I am who I was before, from where I'm coming from, and 
what I want to be. Actually, one day she discovered that she was coming from the trees, so then she started collecting all these uh, leaves from the autumn, that is the natural waste of the trees, and uh, then also start collecting like the sawdust from industry, that is the industrial waste of the trees. So put everything together and make herself as a, as a tree. Of course, a chair cannot be a tree anymore, and then this is what they wanted to be, a chair that just gives shelter to a human being. And then just going quickly, I do a lot of workshops with uh, my people uh, inside of the studio to motivate them, and that was the workshop before I created this collection, a collection where I didn't want to be like uh, the cocoon guy or the paper guy, I just wanted to explore more materials. I take concrete, I take glass, I take anything that I had around me and I put it in one frame, in one sh simple shape. And uh, that's the diversity collection, no? And it's kind of like uh, I compare it with human beings. We all have the same skeleton, but uh, depending on our experience, we are all very different. We are sharp, we are cold, we are soft, we are rusted and old, we are white and um, cute, we are wild. So, yeah, it's talking about that. Texture, materials, experiments. And actually, like this is something like I believe, like probably inspired the whole collection. I didn't know until I finished the collection and I find it back in uh, one of my pockets and I thought, like, wow, this piece, I really loved it during one summer. It was all the summer in my pocket and I thought, like, oh, <laughs> this has so many characteristics from the previous collection that probably this was in my subconscious and brought out through a collection of 20 different chairs. So I think, like, small things can change and can make like big, big difference. Uh, the, the presentation during this year, Marques that we did to be able to go to Basel, and this was kind of like the last uh, piece for the, for the collection, Bush of Iron. It's just made out of uh, st uh, steel. We keep working, the year of the light was last year, finally I created a light, and it's kind of like mixing, uh, mixing technology with the most, uh, one of the most prehistoric uh, feelings no? like, uh, that we have, that is the, the, the tactility. Lee was talking about the, the importance of tactility yesterday. And actually it's true, like uh, every, everything is so sleek and when we are talking about technology, we see the screens and they are all kind of like, you don't, I mean, it's so soft. And this one is kind of like a sun and epoxy. When you touch it, it's really like <clears throat> nature into it, you know? Who doesn't enjoy to really take the shoes out and step in the beach and feel like, oh. It's not normal, it's not happening anymore. We live in cities where actually like it's becoming very different, difficult. And then this, 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 and thank you very much. Well done. Thank you very much. Sorry to rush you at the end. So look, we've got a lot of young designers in the audience, so I just wanted to start off. You can see from um, what our panelists have showed you, we've got a full breadth of design experience here from someone who works in, in um, the Indian office of a, a large design consultancy that deals with some very commercial projects, but also some NGO type projects, some social projects someone who's had tremendous experience in large-scale industrial projects, someone who's working on their own as a, as a designer maker, at more than maybe the sort of arts end. So we've got a, a very good cross-section. So I just wanted to start off with the panel with one question, which is about young designers coming out of college into professional life, whatever sphere they, turn, they, they choose to go into. What's the most important thing they need from the organizations and the industry that receives them and also what's the most important things that they need to learn that's different in the professional world from their, their educational experience? I think in my mind the most important thing is that we need to make sure we are not arrogant. You know I have seen a lot of uh, designers and students coming out of schools and they have this high that we are very creative. And when, peop when they go into the professional world and they talk to their potential patrons, there is this disconnect. People, creativity is a hard thing to wrap your heads around. And people don't talk your language. 
that doesn't mean you look down upon them. It is actually our duty to educate the society and to talk to the people at their level. And because if that doesn't, that connection doesn't happen, just the way the connection with consumer doesn't happen, the product will not sell. If your connection with your patrons and with the society doesn't happen, we as designers are pretty much toast. We won't be able to make an impact on the society. So I think in our design schools, uh, reflecting back on the panel before us, in our design schools, it's very important that we share the or show or give importance to the role of analytical thinking along with creative thinking. Aldo, what's your experience? It's, uh, for me, it's difficult to speak about uh, the Indian market because I don't know what's happening. Uh, in my experience, in Europe, now uh, every people, every student ask me, uh, where? Where are the, the where are the work? Because we don't have uh, the company I produce in Italy and Europe, and uh, if you don't have the possibility to, to to work together the company, they don't invest in a design. There is a big problem. Uh, my opinion uh, is. Uh, when uh, the student come out of the university or uh, school of the design, it's important to enter immediately in a company production, not in a design center, because in a company production, you can understand exactly what is the, the point. Uh, the, the point is not only the part of the aesthetical design. There are a lot of uh, different points, uh, the cost of the product, uh, the time of the product, how do you need for design this bottle. When, when, when uh, you work in a design center, the design center sell your design, and so you need uh, to fix the time of the need for design the packaging on this portal, for example, is very realistic. Uh, it's not uh, only the philosophy, the design. The design is a serious, is a business. When, when the design is business, you change completely the approach. And that's a very different approach to that, so maybe you can... <laughs> I think like... Um... Just following what you will say, I really, I think like design is about like really uh, analyze, analyze what we need, analyze who we are, analyze what we want to achieve with what we do. So um, I think like it's, it's important to really like that you have uh, these ideas very clear, that the students have the ideas very clear to, to know because you are the future, we are the future, you know, what we create actually is going to be reflected in few years, so think what we really want, what we really need, and then do it. All right, can we have the, the lights up, please? Can we have the lights up a bit so I can see the audience, because I, uh, I want questions. Oh, brilliant, thanks. Okay, so who's, who has a question? Come on, don't be shy. Come on, stick your hand up. I'll come to you with a microphone. Yes, there's a gentleman there. Hold on. Thank you. Uh, what I wanted to ask was to all three of you, actually all four of you, is that uh, creativity has uh, no stop sign. It, it doesn't really stop anywhere. It keeps going. I mean, you can see that over the period of years with the movements we have. So as a designer, how do you say, OK, this is when I'm going to stop exploring this is my you know this is when I'm gonna stop because otherwise what happens is you're really never satisfied you always look at okay this could be this way this could be that way so as a designer we're, we're still students so we don't really know but as a professional how would you say okay I like my treehouse like the one you did I like it that way this is it end of story I'm not gonna do anything else beyond this isn't that just when the deadline happens? That's when you have to stop? When the exhibition opens? <laughs> I think you never stop. Time stops you. I mean, uh, right now I have a screen here that says, time up, 
already for a few minutes, so we need to leave. But that's why I stop. I mean, I stop when the project needs to be next day in the, in the exhibition, when probably like the button needs to be in the market. You do your best until the last second. I think you're right in some of the things that, that you work on, there is necess not necessarily a, an end point because they're, they're systems that can carry on and grow and, and, and they have an afterlife. They're not, it's not just about designing something which is a finite object. It's almost designing a process which then has a life. Yeah, very well. Can you hear me? So very well put. Actually, some of the designs we do are more like platform approach. So like you said, the solution never stops. Users actually become part of the solution. But in terms of just the process of design, actually, at some level, you should know when good enough is good enough. And then stop there, put the minimum viable product into the market, and iterate on the design. So what never stops is prototyping. What never stops is thinking. That doesn't mean that the launch of the product or the service needs to stop. So you should never stop thinking, so you are right, but you have to do your job. You have to put it out in the market. Okay, um, look, we, we, we don't have much time, so I'm gonna take two more questions, so make them good. Um, yes, gentlemen there, hold on, I'll come to you. Yeah, my question is to uh, Ms. Aradna. Uh, in your presentation, you said that uh, a design, a design uh, is also about engineering and how uh, everybody deserves a quality education. Uh, what we have generally seen in the Indian scene is that there is this rift between a designer and an engineer. So how do we bridge that gap? Like how do we Actually, because for a designer, when it comes to, you know, project uh, his or her product or his or her design, he has to go right from the time of his ideation to the synthesizing of the product to the marketing. That involves engineering also. But still, at a lot of uh, firms or at a lot of uh, platforms, engineering is given a upper hand or is biased towards it. Like, people are biased towards it. So how do we bridge that, being a designer? So I actually don't have an answer on how you bridge it, but philosophically, I personally and even as IDEO's philosophy, we believe that there is no difference between a designer or a fine arts person and an engineer. If you are a problem solver, you are a designer. What you actually are using, like whatever tool you have at hand is what you use to solve the problem. So if you are an engineer, you will use the blueprints and whatever you know to solve the same problem. And if you are a designer, you will solve the problem your way. If you are a sculptor and an artist, Nacho will solve the problem very differently the way I would. So what we usually do, and then there is the power of collaboration. Based on the challenge at hand, you actually put interesting individuals with different perspectives together, and that's how you solve the problem. So there's not one up over the other. And how does one bridge the gap in the society like ours, which, is, which likes to peg, you know, stereotype everyone? There is the power of collaboration. You know, it's like we have to work in teams and understand each other, and that might help solve the problem. Aldo, I expect you've had some experience of that. Uh, it's completely yeah, it's completely different the approach of Nacho design for Nacho. The designer, industrial designer, design for the company. If you design for uh, Samsung or for design this, you, know, you need uh, to work together the engineering. If you not work with the engineering, when you have to to start in the phases of design and design refinement, you you you. Uh, make the mock-up, but when you make a mock-up, you need to understand what's happening in, in the hardware inside of this. And you need the, the engineering and industrialization phases. And so, if you don't have the engineering, you cannot go into the product. If you don't have the design, the, 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 the project, they don't have a successful. This is my opinion. Okay, we have time for one last brilliant question. Who's got the best question ever? <laughs> right, no pressure. Hello. <clears throat> uh, well, uh, not everyone can be a designer, but uh, a designer can be anybody. Uh, basically, what I want to say is like anybody who's not from a design school can also be a designer. 
But why is it that you recognize only the ones who are from the design school? Why does what? Sorry. Uh, why do you recognize the ones only who are from the design school? We don't. So, well, that's the norm. <laughs> that's the norm. There are many things that are norms, but we don't. I mean, if you're talking about uh, IDEO, we don't. If you talk about India, actually even India doesn't. If you see, India generally is run on the, uh, and, like, on entrepreneurs. And the entrepreneurs who are in the market, it doesn't matter what field they come from. They are innovating. They are designing their way through the challenges. I don't think when you actually are out in the market or, I mean, out in the society, you don't carry a placard that you have an architecture degree or industrial design degree. People know you from your work. Uh, well, I'm talking from experience, actually. Uh, and uh, although it's a little less in India, yes, but of course, if you need to go abroad, like that becomes a very integral part of your uh, career. I'm, well, talking, I'm talking from experience. <laughs> All right. Well, we, sure we may have to agree to disagree on that one. So, Radna, Aldo, Nacho, thank you very much. Thank you all.